Math 230, Quest to College, I'm Joe Vasta and today we are covering section 3.4 equivalent statements. This is our last section in logic. Before we do that let's go ahead and take a look at our puzzle. Which word comes next? So it's a sequence of words drama, rabbi, cycle, idle, tense, affix, and then which word from this list can you put into that box? So that is the puzzle. Let's go ahead and finish up our chapter on logic 3.4. Here it goes. Two statements that have identical truth values are logically equivalent. Okay, and you put them on, you look at their truth tables and see if the final columns are identical. We've done this already. If statement P is logically equivalent to statement Q, then the equivalence is denoted by not an equal sign but a double arrow. So we say two statements are equivalent. And in this section we are going to be looking at some important equivalent statements. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one right here. Are the statements logically equivalent? Okay, there's three problems here. If P then Q, remember this is the conditional. If Q then P. So that's problem number one. Let's go ahead and um, create a truth table. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put both of those statements on the same truth table. And then we'll, we'll check this out. So let's put this one on the truth table first. If P then Q. So I need um, letter P and letter Q. I also need to make this line here. We'll make it with this Sharpie pin. This is one stinky Sharpie pin that I have. Wow, this must be an old one. Woo. Okay, so I'm going to put letter P and letter Q. And so hopefully you've been doing truth tables in your homework and you know that um, this one alternates by one. True, false, true, false. And this one alternates by two. True, true, false, false. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some truth table for this. If P, then Q. So if P, then Q. So what do we have here? So I'm not going to put first under and second under like I've been doing because I'm going to need this for this one as well. So I don't want to like start writing things and scratching them out. But you have to do this in the correct order. If first column, then second column. If true, then true is true. If true, then false is false. The other ones that start with if false, they're going to be true, but we'll go through it. If false, then true is true. And if false, then false is also true. This is what we learned in the last section. Okay, let's go ahead and put the next statement up here which is this guy right here. This is Q then P. Or if Q then P, you can say the if part. I'm going to say Q then P when I write it out. So I've got to be careful now because I have to be careful what order I'm, I'm saying the um, hypothesis and the conclusion. So watch this. If true then true. So notice if, if this column then that column. If true then true is true. If false, then true. See the order I'm doing this in because it's Q first. If false, then true is also true. If true, then false is false. And if false, then false is true. Now I need some colors here. Here's my original statement. So let's call this in quotes the original. 
was the original statement. I will circle this column in green. And um, for this one, this actually has a name and we learned this last lecture. If you have the original statement and you, you swap the hypothesis with the conclusion, you've got something called the converse. Now the converse, we have the truth values here. They do not have the same truth values as the original, so that they don't match. So I have to circle it in a different color. The answer to this question, are the statements logically equivalent? Well, because they don't have the same truth values when I put them on the same truth table, we're going to say no. So a conditional statement is not logically equivalent to its converse. And um, from time to time, people assume that it is. And that's where people get in trouble with logic. So we're going to do some very important things today. Okay, problem number two is this statement here, P then Q, equivalent to not P then not Q. And so we got to put these guys on the same truth table. Because I'm lazy and also because I have space on this truth table, I'm going to go ahead and um, I already have this one. It's in green. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one on the truth table. Um, I can't just put that as the next column because I need a not P column and a not Q column. So that's what I'm going to do. So my next column is not P and then not Q. And then after that, I'll put the whole statement here. And this is not P, then not Q. And notice about this statement here, it has a name. If you look at the original, um, I've negated the hypothesis and negated the conclusion. So the name of this statement is called the inverse. And that was covered last time as well. So let's go ahead and create the negation P column. So P is true, true, false, false. Negation P is false, false, true, true. Okay, so we're done with that. The negation Q column, well, Q is true, false, true, false. Negation of that is false, true, false, true. Okay, so now let's go ahead and um, do the inverse. The inverse is if not P, then not Q. We have to do it in this order. If this column, then that column. So if false, then false equals true. If false, then true equals true. If true, then false, well, that is false. And if true then true is true. So is this column identical to the green column? And the answer is no. Now the funny part about this inverse column, it is actually identical to the converse. So the inverse and the converse of a conditional statement, they happen to be logically equivalent. Let's go ahead and do problem number three, which says, are these two statements logically equivalent? The original statement that I have in green, so I'll just use the same truth table. And um, this guy right here, which is, I'll put him on the truth table, not Q, then not P. We're ready to generate this column because we do have a not Q and a not P. Um, this guy right here is called the contrapositive, which we covered in the last section as well. So we got to be careful the way we do this column. We have to do if this column first, if the not Q column, then the not P. So if false then false is true. If true then false is 
false. If false then true is true, if true then true is true as well. So this column that I just wrote, is that the same as the original green column? And the answer is yes, it matches letter for letter. So I'll circle this one in green. And the answer to this question is yes. So what does that tell you? That tells you, well, I have some space to put this. P, then Q is logically equivalent to the statement not Q, then not P. This is very important. It has a name. It's called the law of contrapositive. It's the law of contrapositive. And it's used in logical arguments. So before we get into um, some applications of this, I'm going to give you a conditional statement. I'm going to ask you to write an equivalent conditional statement. So that's coming up right here. So look what it says. So it says write a different conditional statement that is equivalent to the given statement. So this is an if-then statement. We're supposed to write another if-then statement that is equivalent. What they really want us to write is the contrapositive. And without telling us that, because we should know the contrapositive is an equivalent if-then statement. So let's see if we can write the contrapositive. If. If what? Okay, so if it is a kitten, then it is a cat. The contrapositive is a swapping the hypothesis with the conclusion and negating at the same time. So if it is not a cat, comma, then what? Then we negate this part. It is not a kitten. So basically, when you get something like this in the homework or on the test, they just want to make sure that you know the law of contrapositive. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do these problems on your own. Okay, if you don't study, then you will fail. Okay, so here are the statements. There's the hypothesis. Here is the conclusion. And so they want us to write, write a, an equivalent statement to that, that's if then. So I'm just writing the contrapositive. If what? Okay, so I'm going to swap those and negate them. Now here's the part that um, people always ask in class. Um, how do you do this? I mean, are we going to say if you won't fail? You can say that. But when you're doing this, you can change the tense. You know, maybe you can change it from present tense to, to past tense. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say the negation of you will fail is, I mean, it, you really can say you won't fail, but I'm going to say if you didn't fail. And this is just a matter of style for me. If you didn't fail, comma, then um, I'm going to change this to past tense too. So then what? Then I'm going to negate that part. Then you studied. Of course, you could say if you won't fail, then you study. And that's great. And some teachers would actually 
they would not like what I'm doing where I'm being a little more relaxed on the present tense, past tense, but you know, I'm not a I'm not an English teacher, so this is good enough for me. If you didn't fail, then you studied. Okay, what about this one right here? This is if S, then not M. Basically, we're just supposed to write the contrapositive. So swap them and negate them. What's the negation of negation M? It would just be M. So this is M, if M, then, and then this guy goes on the other side, but you negate them. The S goes on the other side, so not S. Even though the ones with the letters are less interesting, they're easier to write the answer because we're done. It's very compact. And so that is how you do um, problems like that in your homework. Let's go ahead and talk about arguments using the conditional. Okay, here it goes. If you take these pills today, then you'll feel better tomorrow. Suppose the above statement is true, and you feel better tomorrow, can we conclude you took the pills? Okay, so we can read this. Let's write this statement that's supposed to be true. If you take these pills today, I don't want to write out that whole statement, so I'm going to um, label you take these pills today, I'm going to label that P. So if you take these pills today, then you'll feel better tomorrow. So you'll feel better tomorrow, I'll label that as B. Suppose this statement is true, and you feel better tomorrow. Okay, so suppose this happens. Can we conclude, so can we do this, can we conclude you took the pills. Okay. So this is true. Can we conclude this from this? And the answer is no. Why? Because if you said yes, then You would be, I'd say, uh, you would be assuming the converse. Okay, so we don't want to assume the converse. We saw when we did the truth table with all those statements on there that the converse is not equivalent to the original statement. So it's the laws of logic and not us thinking about what do I feel about this. I mean I know some people did this like well you could feel better the next day because of something else and you know you just start going off on tangents and I mean that's alright at times but on this we can just use the law of logic, uh, the law of logic that this is not equivalent to that and so we say no. Let's go ahead and um, do another one. And maybe you can do this one on your own. Okay, if you study hard for the class, let's make that statement S, then you will pass the class. Now in all these problems, we, we give you a statement in quotes and we say that we're going to suppose that statement is true. So we're just supposing that's true. And you know, you might say, well, that's not a true statement in some of my classes. I study hard and I still fail. But let's just assume this is true. And also, you did not pass the class. So let's put that below like we did on the other one. So you did not pass the class. Can we conclude that you did not study hard for the class? So, is this statement the same as that statement? Are they logically equivalent? 
And the answer is yes, they are. Why? Because that's the contrapositive. And we have the law of contrapositive that says these are equivalent. So in your homework, when you get problems that look like this, don't freak out. Just label things with letters and ask, hey, is it the contrapositive? Yes, it is. So the answer is yes. Oh, no, it's the inverse or the converse or one of the other, you know, ones. And then we say, no. Why don't we go ahead and do another one? So pause the video. See if you can get the answer to this. And we'll get going with this. If you crash the car, then you will get a ticket. So there's the statement that we are going to suppose is true. Okay. Now it might not be true, maybe you've crashed a car and you didn't get a ticket, but we're, we're just assuming we live in a world where that is true. Okay, so suppose that's true and you did not crash the car. Okay. Can we conclude that you did not get a ticket? So can we conclude this? Well, here's the original statement, and what is this right here? This is the inverse. So we cannot assume the inverse. We're going to say no. Because if we did, if did, like if we did conclude that you did not get a ticket, then we would be assuming the inverse. And we saw with those truth tables that the inverse was not logically equivalent to the original statement. Besides, You could have not crashed the car, but went like 100 miles per hour, and then you ended up getting a ticket. But the deal is, just that I said that means I'm kind of going outside the rules of logic and saying, well, let's just think about this. But, which is all right from time to time, but we want to stick with the laws of logic, and 100% of the time, we don't have to like go, hmm, suppose this happened. We can just say, oh, look, it's the um, inverse, so the answer is no. Some of you will think this is a weird problem, so see if you can do this problem on your own. If you take this class, then you will be smarter. So let's go ahead and say take this class is going to be statement T. You take this class. You will be smarter is statement S. We're just making up those letters. I mean, you could say you take this class as statement P. But the deal is I like to um, pick, pick out something from this phrase like T for take the class and that's how I do it. We're going to suppose that this statement is true and you are taking this class. Can we conclude that you will be smarter? So it looks like I just wrote the same statement. Or, well are those two statements logically equivalent? Of course they are. So the answer to this is yes. And this is a direct argument. So you know that, I mean, you can take a whole semester of, of logic. The class is called logic, and you could really get into this. This class is just a little snapshot at the beginnings of logic, okay? So we're not doing too much with logic. But what I'm doing here, problems one through four, are probably the most important thing that you learn in this class. So I don't want you going around assuming the inverse or assuming the converse. Or if someone does assume one of those wrong things, especially if you're having a debate or they're getting you to try to sign a contract or they're bringing back a contract you signed, you will be logic savvy and you will say, no, that is not what it means. So logic can actually help you in your life, especially what you're doing now. Okay, well here's one. Back in the 1960s they had a show called Star Trek. 
And of course, some of you might go, oh, well, I, I just remember the newer movies. Well, that's cool. You might know some of these characters. So this comes from the episode, Tomorrow is Yesterday. And I would try to put that clip on this video, but I think there's something with copyright and my face has to be in the clip or something. So I'm just gonna do it this way. So um, what's happening in this episode is Spock, who's supposed to be the king of logic, says this statement. If Mr. Scott is still with us, auxiliary should be on momentarily. Now, sometimes when people say if then statements and they don't say the then, that's all right. That then, and that looks like an or, doesn't it? That's supposed to be proof reading notation. Oh, well, it just says when, when he says that, the then is implied. Let me just make that into an error so you don't think I'm saying there's an or there. Okay. If Mr. Scott is still with us, so let's make that be, and Mr. Scott is, is the engineer guy. You're like, well, what importance is that? It, there's no importance, just in case you know Star Trek. So he wears a, a red shirt, and that's when people say, beam me up, Scotty. That's what they mean. And even though he wears a red shirt, he's not a red shirter, which means sometimes when they go down to the planet, lots of times if you're wearing a red shirt and you're an unknown, you're probably gonna die. So, wow, am I going off on a tangent. Let's go back to this statement. So if Mr. Scott is still with us, then auxiliaries, that's the power, should be on momentarily. Suppose the above statement is true and the auxiliaries come back on. Can we conclude that Mr. Scott is still with us? And the answer is no. Because if you did, this would be assuming the converse. which is exactly what Spock did. The power did come back on and he said, Mr. Scott is still with us. So it's not really his fault. It's really the writers, okay? That's not the guy who played him or whatever. He's just, he's just doing his lines. So there are math errors, logical errors in Hollywood television, movies, things like that. And you may be able to pick up on it if you know about contrapositive, converse, and inverse. So let's go ahead and sum up a lot of the stuff that we've been doing. So here it is. We have the law of double negation, which I think we covered in an earlier lecture where you have negation, negation P is logically equivalent to P. We have the law of contrapositive, which says if P then Q is the same as the contrapositive. If not Q, then not P. Now here's some new ones that we did not cover. And this is the negation of the disjunction and the negation of the conjunction. So I didn't actually prove them. I'm gonna do one of them. I just, uh, I, di I didn't know I was gonna do this. I, I was just gonna say, here they are, accept them. And some of you might wanna um, fast forward through this. I'm gonna put these guys. I'm, so I'm gonna um, show that the negation of the disjunction is true by putting those on a truth table, okay? I don't know why at the last minute I changed my mind and wanted to do this. Just so the student out there, you know, there are some students who are like, well, why is that true? Well, I'm going to show you why. Here's P, here's Q, and then um, I'm going to build up the statement first. So this is P or Q, and then this is negation, P or Q, and I'm going to see what that column is, and then I'm going to build up this. So uh, over here, I, I'm going to need a not P column and a not Q column, and then not P and not Q. So what I'm saying here is that we are going to have the same final columns, you know, this column here and this column here, and I kind of spoiled it by 
by doing this, but maybe you can turn off the video, pause it, and see if you can fill out this truth table for all of this. I'm kind of doing two statements in one truth table. Okay, whether you paused it or not, I'm gonna go ahead and write out what I always write out for this. Okay, and I will not use the bugs. I'll just try to go a little quicker. Um, true or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. So these are the arithmetic facts of logic that we've covered already. And once again, it would have been better if I did an online paper, but oh well, ho hopefully it won't get too wavy. I'm gonna do the negation of what I just did. So I just did true, 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 false. So this is gonna be false, 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 true. I'm gonna circle this. Just pick up a color quickly and oh, it's purple this time. There it is. And now I'm going to go ahead and build up to this statement. So negation P is false, false, true, true. False, false, true, true. Negation of Q is um, false, true, false, true. And now I'm going to add these two columns together. So false and false is false. False and true is false. So the and is stricter. True and false is false. And true and true is true. And look what I have here. So the, ne the negation of the uh, disjunction, the disjunction is the fancy word for the or, so you have an or here and you're doing the negation of that. Now look what happens. I think that this will help you memorize this. There's three symbols inside the parentheses. So when you do the negation of the or, you take the negation of each of these three symbols. Look at this. Negation of P is negation P. Negation of an or. Well, this is a new thing that we're learning. Negation of an or is an and. Negation of Q is negation Q. So that's how I remember the negation of a disjunction. I'm not going to go ahead and show you the um, proof for the negation of the conjunction. But you can do that if you want. But look at this. So to remember this, you have three symbols in there and you just negate each of the three symbols. Negation P, negation AND is OR, negation Q. These two laws of logic are called De Morgan's laws. De Morgan was a person who studied this. So that is something cool because now what we're gonna do is we're going to write the negation of certain statements. Okay, and that's what they're going to ask you to do in your homework. So remember, just remember how it goes. You just take the negation of all three parts. So here are the instructions. Write the negation of the statement. So I'll do this one and then um, I'll, hopefully you'll, you can pause the video and do the other two. Maybe you can do all three of them. I don't know. So look at this. I feel sick or I am tired. So I feel sick or I am tired. So there's three parts there. Ah, can we turn it to symbols? Yeah, but we don't have to. Watch this. I'm just going to take the negation of all three parts. Oh, and by the way, because this is going to help later on, when I'm going to take the negation, let me get the red out. I will write the answer in red for this lecture because this is going to help out when things get a little bit more complicated um, after a few problems here. So I feel sick. The negation of that is I do not feel sick. Okay, so that's the first part. Negation of an or is an and. I do not feel sick and, and then negation of this part right here, I am tired, I am not tired. Of course, you can say I don't feel sick and I'm not tired. I'm writing it all out here. There it is, there's the negation of I feel sick or I am tired. Okay, so pause the video and see if you can do the next two on your own. Okay, 
so problem number two. I'm not sad and I'm hungry. So I'm going to take the negation of those three parts. The negation of I'm not sad is I'm sad. Negation of an and is an or. Negation of I'm hungry. I'm not hungry. There it is. Okay, let's go ahead and take the negation of the statement P or not Q. So here's P or not Q. What am I doing? I'm underlining the three parts. So negation of P is negation P. Negation of the cup is the cap. So negation of the or is the and. And negation of negation Q is just Q. So there we have it. So now we know how to do the negation of an and, the negation of an or. Now we're going to go ahead and do another problem here. Put the following two statements on a truth table. So I'm going to put them on the same truth table. First thing I want to do is write column P, column Q. I'll make a thick line here. Oh no, not the Sharpie that smells really bad. Oh wow, I'm going to have to get rid of this. So I have true, true. So Q alternates by one. And P alternates by two. Okay, so let's build up the first statement. If P, then Q. If P, then Q. So we've done this enough times already. Hopefully you've, memor you've memorized the values for the conditional. If true, then true is true. If true, then false is false. If false, then true, true. And if false, then false is true. Okay, so this is the final column of the first statement. Let's go ahead and write the second statement. Um, well, before I write the whole thing, I have to put a negation P column negation P. So I'm going to negate this column here. True, true, false, false. The negation is false, false, true, true. And now I'm going to or that last column I did with Q because that's what it says, not P or Q. Not P or Q. So false or true is true. False or false is false. True or true? True. True or false? That is also true. Because okay, we're dealing with the or here. And look what we have. Two identical columns. So here's the deal. We have just proved another law of logic. This is called the alternative form of the conditional. The alternative form of the conditional says that if P then Q is logically equivalent to not P or Q. So this can go on our list. I think um, a few papers ago I had a list of four. Now here's a fifth one. Um, 
Remember how I said that your fundamental operators were AND, OR, and NOT in another lecture? Well, I also said the arrow can be created by those fundamental building blocks. And we didn't even need all of them. I didn't even need an AND. Look what the arrow can be built with. A NOT and an OR. And that creates arrow. So all the other logical arguments that we haven't studied like either, or, because, etc. can be built using ands, ors, and nots. And so we have that one there. So this is something you're going to want to have down when you do your homework and take the test. You want to make sure you know how to use this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some problems here. see how we're doing with time. We're at the 41 minute mark. Okay, look what it says. It says, write a disjunction. What is a disjunction? It's an OR. Write an OR that is equivalent to the given statement. So I have an if-then statement and you're trying to write the OR. So let me go ahead and just put this rule down here. We have P, then Q. This is from the last page. And when it was logically equivalent to negation P or Q. So those are the same. So what happens is here's the arrow which represents the then. Okay. But the deal is, on this, you take the arrow out, which you're really taking the if then out, and you replace the then, you replace the arrow with that, you replace the then with an or. So this is how you do these problems. And then you have statement P and Q. One of them gets negated. Which one? It is P. The first one gets negated. So look what it says. You eat mud, the negation of that is? You don't eat mud. Don't. Eat. Mud. You don't eat mud, and then the second part, look, it stays the same. You don't eat mud, or you'll get sick. And so there's the answer. Now, did we write the negation of this statement? No, no, we didn't write the negation. We wrote a statement that means exactly the same thing as the if then. We wrote an equivalent statement that's a disjunction. That's an or. Okay, so it means the same thing. If you eat mud, then you'll get sick. It means the same thing as you don't eat mud or you'll get sick. And so maybe, just maybe, you can pause the video and write a disjunction that is equivalent to these statements. Okay, so let's do problem number two, the if-then. I rip out the if-then, I replace the then with an or. When I wrote these, I must have been hungry or something. Which part gets negated? The first part or the second part? Well, it's the first part. The negation of you don't eat is you eat. Okay. The second part stays the same. You eat or you'll be hungry. And there it is. That's how you change an if then to an or. And I want to emphasize, I'm not taking the negation of the statement. I'm not writing the negation of this if then statement. I am just writing an equivalent statement. If I were writing the negation today in this lecture, I'd be using the red pin, which will be coming up again. Okay, what's the um, an equivalent statement that's a disjunction on this? Well, this one's probably easier to write, not as, not as much writing here. 
you rip out the arrow, which is the if then, and you replace it with the or, which is the cup. Now, which one gets negated, the first part or the second part? So which one was it? It was always the first part. What's the negation of not P? It would be P. And then Q stays the same. These two statements are logically equivalent. If we put them on the same truth table, you'd get the same final columns on both of those. Okay. So look at these examples. We went from if then to or on all three examples. On the next three examples, we're going to go from or back to if then. Okay. So or back to if then. Let me go ahead and write up this law here that we've proven. So really I'm going up. Okay, so I'm going from here to up there. You're going to rip out the OR. Here's the OR. What are you going to replace the OR with? Then. And you're going to put an if at the beginning of the statement. Okay. So cup became arrow. Which part gets negated as you're going from here to up here? Which part changes? It's the not P. This is the first part that gets negated. And so that's what I'm going to do. This first part, you stay, gets negated. So it's going to become you do not stay or you don't stay. So you stay becomes you don't stay. So the original problem was you stay or I'll leave. Now we have if you don't stay then the second part as you go back up stays exactly the same. I'll leave remains I'll leave remains uh, the bad word for that. I'll leave it stays up. Oh, it stays. Okay, I'm just going to stop talking. There's the statement. If you don't stay, then I'll leave. And that is an equivalent statement. It's an, a, right in a, a conditional that is equivalent to the given statement. So we have a disjunction or we have an or and we wrote an equivalent if then. And we just used this. This is what we were using last time. In fact, if you wanted to change this if then, back to an or, you'd rip out the if then and put the or there and then you'd negate the first part. You'd get you stay or I'll leave. So pause the video and see if you can jot down the negation of, what am I saying, not the negation, jot down um, an equivalent conditional of these or statements. Okay, so see if you can do that on your own. Okay, so we are writing a conditional that's equivalent to this statement. We are not writing the negation of this statement. We are just writing an equivalent statement. So I'm going to rip out the or. Now this statement says you shower or they won't like you. Okay, so that's pretty brutal. But let's continue on this. Rip out the or, replace it with the then. And throw an if way out front. Okay, which part gets negated? First part or the second part? And you can see here, it is the first part. If what? If you don't shower, spacing it out so it looks good. You know, see how I spaced it out? Because I think I, let, I put too much space in there. If you don't shower, this part stays the same. Okay, the Q stays the same. They won't like you. It's a brutal world, isn't it? Okay, but there's the statement. You shower or they won't like you is the same as if you don't shower, then they won't like you. 
Okay, the last one of this type, we have the OR. Okay, now this is all symbols. I'm going to rip out the OR and replace it with the arrow, the THEN. And then which part gets negating? You're probably getting sick of me saying this in this video, but it's always what? The first part. Negation, P. And the second part stays the same. Negation, Q. Just like in all these problems, you can go ahead and change this back to an OR. You'll get the same thing if you follow the same rule. And so that is an important law of logic that you can write the if then using an or and a negation. And our last part of logic, this is it. Then we're done with logic. So for those of you who were sick of doing logic, it's coming to an end here. Um, we've written the negation of a negation. Negation, negation P is just P. We've written negations of ands and ors by using the De Morgan's laws. So what is left, and I'm trying to see if I have, um, my paper's over here. What is, is left is writing the negation of an if-then statement. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So my answers are going to be in red. I'm going to write the negation of the if-then statement. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, there is another law of logic that we can put out there, but when I do that, I'll talk about that later. When I do that, it confuses people with the last law that we just learned. So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. Um, when I teach this face-to-face, -face, students memorize the laws of logic, and so this makes more sense to do it this way if you're memorizing this. Write the negation. So we don't have a rule for this yet. We have not established one in this lecture. If I stay, then there will be trouble. Hmm, sounds a little familiar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to an OR statement. I'm going to rip out the IF and THEN, so I'm not writing the negation of my IF THEN statement, I'm just changing it to the OR. Remember the THEN becomes an OR, and which part gets negated? The first part or the second part? It's the first part. So the first part's going to say, I do not stay, or I'll just say I don't stay, or what? Second part stays the same. There will be trouble. So they could have done the song this way, but it doesn't sound as good. I don't stay, or there will be trouble, and they're singing that. Okay. What did I just do? I just went ahead and used this law that we have been using in the last few problems. So now I went ahead and wrote out, this is pretty much the same statement. It's an equivalent statement to the if then. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to negate each of these parts. And when I do that, let's see. Now I'm doing De Morgan's Law. Um, I don't stay, the negation of that is I stay. Negation of OR is and negation of there will, there will be trouble will be there will not be trouble. Or won't if you want. Imagine if they had sung their song that way. I stay and there will not be trouble. Um, it doesn't sound like a bad boy anymore, does it? And so that's the negation of this if-then statement. Okay. Why don't you try the next two by pausing the video. Okay. If Bob is not nice, then we are not safe. Oh, what's up with Bob? Well, anyway, I'm going to circle the if-then statement. I'm not writing the negation yet. I'm writing um, an equivalent OR statement. So the then gets replaced with OR. Bob is not nice. So um, 
because I'm just using this law, it's the first one that always gets negated, not the second one. So this is Bob is nice. Or what? Or we are not safe. Now that's not my final answer. I did not take the negation of this if-then statement. This is equivalent. And now I'm going to take the negation of this equivalent statement by using the De Morgan's Laws. So I, I take the negation of each of them. Oh, look, it's doing this weird thing here, this stupid pen here. Okay, so I take the negation of each of these three parts here. So what's the negation of Bob is nice? It is Bob is not nice. Negation of an or is and negation of we are not safe would be we are safe. Okay, so um, there's the negation of your original if-then statement. Okay, let's do this one right here. Write the negation of if P then not Q. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write an equivalent statement, rip out the arrow, replace it with the OR, and which one gets negated? Why, well, it's always the first one, so watch this. Negation P or negation Q. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, use De Morgan's laws right here and negate each of those parts. So the negation of negation P is just statement P. Negation of an OR is an AND. And negation, ugh, what am I doing here? I'm completely messing this up. This is a Q here. Hope I didn't say um, P on that one. So this is negation Q here. Okay, negation of negation Q is Q. So we're done. So we could say we're, we're completely done, but let's just point something out here. Notice that all these um, problems here, they fall into the same thing. When I ask for the negation of an if then, really you always get what in your negation? You always get the and, don't you? There it is. And not only that, but the first part actually stays the same and the second part gets negated. So most of us will probably want to just do it the way that I did it here, where you just take that middle step. But there are some logic teachers that go like this. Well, why there is a rule that looks like this, where you negate if P then Q. And say they say this, well this is logically equivalent to negation P, oh sorry, how do, I'm just going to rewrite P then Q as not P or Q, and then they use De Morgan's laws and they get negation negation P which is P and then negation of OR is AND, and negation of Q is NOT Q. So they'll go like this. Okay, here's a new law of logic, and there's nothing wrong with this. This is called the negation of the conditional. But the problem with me doing this, and I've done this in the past when I've taught, is I said, okay, here's another one to write down. Then when students take the test, you know how I've been saying, oh, it's the um, first one that's always negated. Remember on this? It's the first one that's always negated when you're writing an equivalent statement. That sticks in people's heads, and then they get this mucked up. They mess up this law, especially if they're memorizing it. So that's why when I do the negation of an if-then, I always take that, and you can see the baby step right here. It's, it, we step here, and then we step here. I always take that baby step, and that way, I'm not going to mix up these laws of logic in my head. And this really applies for if you ever had to memorize all this stuff. So now it's time to get back to our puzzle. We are done with logic. Make sure you do your homework. And here's the puzzle right here. Okay, maybe you figured out which word comes next 
and we're going to go ahead and look at this. Well, the word that comes next happens to be wiggle. And maybe you figured that out. And here's the logic I'm going by. First word has two A's. Second word has two B's, two C's, two D's, two E's, two F's, two G's. And so that is, um, by that logic, wiggle is the word that comes next. Um, so some of you may choose to say, okay, I'm ending this video. Um, I'm switching over to PowerPoint for a few minutes to talk about Stephen Hawking and logic or maybe his lack of logic when he makes some assumptions. So consider the book, The Grand Design by Stephen Hawking and Leonard. Um, Stephen Hawking is the more notable author here and people want to see what Stephen Hawking had to say about God because they figure he's a smart guy and he probably figured it all out. I mean, look at all the things he says about black holes. Now, Stephen Hawking died in 2018. This book came out in 2010. And some of the stuff that I present about this came from a mathematician from Oxford. His name is John Lennox. So, here it goes. They address issues like God in their book. And what does he have to say about God? There is no God. Okay. If you read this book pretty early on, they have a statement. Philosophy is dead. There are two problems with that statement. The first problem is that's a philosophical statement. So philosophy is dead. You cannot make a philosophical statement. In math, we call that a contradiction. The second problem with philosophy is dead is he uses philosophy throughout his book to address the ultimate questions of life. Another thing that you might come across in this book is this quote here. Because there is a law of gravity, the, earner, the universe can and will create itself out of nothing. So the universe came from nothing and the universe came from something, i.e. gravity, all within the same statement. That statement is nonsense. So you got to be careful when you're reading Hawking or Dotkins or other people and use your brain and use logic. Hawkins or Hawking also subscribes to multiple universes or multiverse. So that's the best picture that I found on the internet that might describe it. This is not to be confused with parallel universes where the same kind of thing is happening but in different universes and there's little variations. Um, multiple universes are these where there's different universes that happen. You see, if there is a if there is no God, then we are extremely lucky to be here. Um, Hawking would even admit that. It's against all odds. However, if you believe in multiple universes and maybe an infinite number of them, then we happen to be on the universe that supports life. So then that makes people sleep better at night. I don't have enough faith to believe in multiverses. And so um, just be careful when you're reading things. Um, you've got logic now, you've got contrapositive, inverse, converse, some things that we've learned in chapter three. This finishes 3.4, equivalent statements. Do your homework, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.